Next, what I want to go over is an inside trip. Now I'm not going to be blocking to the outside of my opponent's leg or Colby's leg. I'm going to be coming from the inside. Now, just as with the outside trip, you need to isolate, secure, and control the lower body or the legs as well as the hip. And you also have to control the upper body. And the inside trip is no different. It's just that the mechanics are different. But in terms of those two concepts, you need to control both to be effective with this type of, a, of an attack. So now we're going to talk about an inside trip. In this type of an attack, I can do this from basically two distances. One is from this type of distance where we're kind of tied up, maybe arm to arm. It's not, it's not an attack where I could do it this distance. There's no way I'd be able to come in quick enough. Okay, so this type of uh, inside control type position is a common position that you can get this in. Also, too, when you're pummeling, when we're pummeling here, this is also a range where this inside trip can come into play. Now, first I want to just discuss a little bit about the bottom half of the work. Okay, what I want to do is I want to get my foot inside Colby's legs here. I'm going to bring him inside and I want to sweep his foot out. So I want to knock this foot from inside out this way here, like that. Now, a couple of problems with being able to do that. First of all, I got to get close enough. If I just try to reach, as you see with my rear leg here, and naturally I'm going to typically try to attack with my front leg because that's going to be quickest. However, with my rear leg where it is here, that's a hard reach. So the first thing you need to learn to do is to skip in to cut the distance. That's crucial. I can't do it by having a big reach. I've got to skip in to get the attack. You'll notice, too, as I do this whole technique, I'm not leaning forward. I'm not arching back. I want to keep my body upright as I move in. OK, so I'm going to just take a little skip here. And you'll notice that this leg comes up because it's going, to come, it's going to be ready to come around. OK, so we skip in. Notice, too, my level is somewhat low. I didn't skip in right upright. I skipped in, and you'll notice that there's a little bend in this leg. My hips are slightly low, not quite as low as if I was going to attack a double. So I'll come in here. Notice, too, my foot is cocked here, and it's going to be ready to go. And I'm going to show you a drill now against the wall to get some proficiency with this type of uh, movement with your foot. So I'm against the wall. To practice this, I'm going to get my distance, Okay, just as if I was having inside control here against my opponent. The wall is going to be my opponent. As if I was kind of moving in here. What I'm going to do is hop. And I want you to notice my leg comes up, my knee is up, my foot is off the mat. When I hook this leg, it's going to be like a, like a circle. I'm not doing this. I'm not coming straight out trying to get his leg and suck it back or pull it back. I'm going to come in a circle. And I want you to notice, and we'll get another angle on this shortly, what my hips are doing. I hop in. My hips are... Are, are pretty much forward, maybe slightly, slightly cocked this way because I'm getting my leg ready to go. I bring my leg out, and it's going to make a circle. My foot's going to make a circle. And I'm kind of pointing my toe a little bit. I'm not keeping it up like this. I'm kind of pointing my toe as I do it. And I want to kind of hit my opponent, if I can, sort of with the back of my heel, my Achilles tendon. And here, again, my hips are facing this way. Now watch my hips as I continue this motion. My hips are facing the other way. You'll notice, too, where my foot landed. I want to keep that circle going. I'm not going to come in here. I'm not going to stop as soon as I make contact. I'm not going to reach in and then try to pull or retract the leg. I'm going to hop in like that. Hop. And my hips turn in here. Like that. Now, I don't have anything out to hold me in front here, so I'm going to lose my balance as I actually demonstrate this, but I want you to get the notion of, of this angle now. So I'm tied up with my partner, I hop in, and I come forward. 
tie it up with my partner, hop, and come in. When I'm holding my opponent, I won't lose my balance. But you'll notice I'm committing my hips. I'm committing this swing here. I'm not reaching and pulling back. It's not out and in. It's just one circle around. And I can only do that if I use my hips. My hips give me the power. And it's crucial that I don't stop here, but that I turn so my leg is going to continue. Again, I don't want to stop here. If my hips are faced in this direction, my leg is going to stop. But if I hop in and I'm turning my hips, that leg is going to continue with good momentum, and that's going to help me be successful in bringing my opponent down. Okay, so now that we talked a little bit about what we're trying to do with the lower body, I'm going to talk about controlling the upper part of the body now. Basically, when I come in with my trip, when I come in here, I've got to do something with my upper body. I really need to control his upper body to bring him down. And I'm not going to demonstrate what I'm doing with my legs now. I'm just going to show you and isolate the upper body portion of it. But as I come in, as I'm hitting him with that trip, what I want to do is I'm going to come in on the overhook side, which is going to be the same side as I'm tripping. Okay, the inside trip is going to come to Kobe's left leg. I want to come down with a hard overhook on his left side. I want to jack his right side up. So as I'm coming in and I'm going to hit him here with my leg, I'm going to come in like this with my upper body. A lot of weight down. Why do I want to put weight down here? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this foot out, his left leg out, and if there's a lot of weight coming down as I'm doing that to where he doesn't have a post, he's going to topple. Okay, and so that's the purpose. Simultaneously as I'm hitting that foot, and it's actually a slight delay. I'm actually hitting the foot first and then I'm clamping down but it happens very rapidly. It's not like one step, two step. It's better to think of it actually as all one movement. Although as you practice coming in, you'll be hitting the leg first, and as you're knocking that leg through, you'll be clamping down on that overhook. And what I'm trying to do, and you'll notice the angle of Colby's body, I'm not gonna come like this and drive straight back this way. I'm gonna be cranking at an angle. Because remember, I'm gonna be trying to hit this foot out this way. So that's the direction I want to be pulling his upper body or torquing his upper body. So as I come in, and I'm not really concerned about like locking per se, and I don't want to lock low too, or grab low, either locking or I'm not, not lock. What I want to do here is just come like this. I'm going to crank down on Kobe's left side, which is the side that I'm attacking the leg, and up on the opposite side. Notice I'm kind of jacking his deltoid up under his arm here. Once more. When I come in, as I'm hitting the leg, boom, like this. Now I want you to notice too, I'm chest to chest. Okay, as I hit him here, I'm chest to chest with him. From here, as I come in, here I'm chest to chest. Where am I looking? I'm looking where I'm going to be going. I'm not looking this way because I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to be looking right where I'm going. And again, the weight is on this side. I certainly wouldn't want to knock this foot out and to be driving him towards his post. That wouldn't make much sense. So I need to isolate the side that I'm attacking the leg, and that's the side I'm going to bring him down on. Now, one thing that may help set this up is because I'm attacking this leg, I've got to be conscious where it is. If Colby's right leg is forward, 
I'd have no business trying to get that deep. Okay, it'd just be very difficult. The angle's unfavorable, his leg's too far away. However, if I gave him a little pop here, I can hop in. Okay, so if I circle my opponent, circle, hop, circle, hop, and I'm ready to attack because I've just changed the angle and brought this leg that I want to attack closer to me. Okay, so one way I set this up sometimes is I get this tug here, and as soon as he steps, I'm hopping in. And that's my opportunity. So one setup, besides just coming in here and kind of just looking for the position to be open, is to circle your opponent. Another option is as we're digging in here, as he's digging in here, I can come in. Notice, as he's slicing through and, and, and threading his underhook in, I'm making that very difficult. I always make on all the throws that I try to set up from my uh, pummeling situation, I make it difficult for my opponent to get in. So they're really committing, and then I go for it. Okay, then I'll all of a sudden give way, let them slide under, and then I'll attack very quickly. And I think that's a crucial thing when you're setting a lot of these type of attacks up. But you'll notice, I came in as he was threading that underhook, and I was making it difficult, but I gave way, then all of a sudden I hop in, and I go for it. Okay, so reviewing. The second way that I like to go for it here is to be pummeling, and then in here. Now you'll notice, too, as you do this more, it's most favorable to try to hit your opponent uh, square. It's most favorable for me to be hitting my opponent square, okay, head on, chest to chest, or center line to center line. However, as you get more experience with it, you can cheat a little bit, you can be hitting them a little bit more to the side. So I can hit them here, and you'll notice, at this point, I'm really not uh, exactly square to him. I'm slightly off to the side, but I can still make it work. And that's just something you'll develop from experience. So I can sometimes, instead of coming straight through, if I give him a tug or we're pummeling, pummeling, to here, okay, and I can bring him down this way. So again, a couple preparations, a circle, and right as that person steps, not after, but right, boom, as they're stepping, as soon as you hear this pop when they step, that's when you're stepping as well, or you're skipping in. Don't wait for them to step, and then take your step, the opportunity will be gone. When I tug Colby, I'm going in at the same time, okay? Remember two, number two is from pummeling. Make it difficult, like with all your throws, and then when they do thread in, I let go a little bit. So they're really pushing hard and they're gonna slingshot in, and that gives me an opportunity to get my grip. One other little fine point I think that, that's important in this type of a technique is when I do make contact with Colby, and when you're practicing this, practice as I come in, when I make contact with my upper body, you wanna kinda of give them a, a bit of a slug with your upper body. In other words, I don't just wanna be kinda of like, stopping here. As I'm coming through, remember, I'm going to be at, at a distance away from Colby. I begin to transition to cut that distance. I make contact and I'm going to be driving through. As I drive through, or as my upper body makes contact, I'm not just thinking of kind of like a, like a push. I want to make a pop with my upper body as much as possible. Okay? If you practice it that way, although it's not going to be really a body slam per se, you'll find that you'll have a little bit more impact and that'll increase the success of that type of a technique because again if I'm popping his upper body this way at the same time pulling out his leg this way he's gonna go down okay so it's not just the lower body and it's not just the upper body but it's how we manipulate those two parts of our opponent in tandem